Hello friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Elizabeth Zamora. I am a pain specialist and holistic nutritionist. I help half conscious women over 40 restart their fitness journey with food and exercises. Today I'm going to talk about how to fix flat feet from home. Before I go into this tool, which is called foam roller, I'm going to explain something about flat feet. I'm gonna give you three tips, three tips to identify and to help the foot to start getting the flow of what it's supposed to be doing, okay? So, first of all, identifying flat feet. I'm gonna show myself. I have I was born. How do you know if you have flat feet? The inner side of your foot is going to be flattened on the floor. Okay? That right there is going to make the pinky toe coming out or not even touching the floor. That that will be the tip one of the things to see when you have flat feet. You may have an arch, but if your foot is going outward, going out, rotating outward, you may not be using your, your, your arch. Therefore, it flattens. So this might be also for you, okay? So one of the other things that we do is rolled our toes. So these two things is basically a compensation of a posture that we're losing or trying to get um, in place. So the toes is to basically to push yourself forward. But because your foot is trying to portion the weight on it, it's trying to balance you out, is doing the best it can for you to maintain yourself up. So the toes are going to grasp and contract. Okay, there's a mechanism, a defense mechanism of the foot. So now the first thing I would do is extended them but I'm gonna show you one more thing to what to, to look at when you have flat feet. We tend to bring our top our knees in when we're going to sit or even when we're going to make a, a, a rotation. Okay so basically those three things those are the things that I look at <laughs> when I'm assessing flat feet. So now if um, this will be is very common on people who has flat feet. Okay? Um, toes outward, knees inward, and that make us have a horrible lower back pain. Okay, so those are the three things to look at to, to recognize if you have flat feet or if you're not using your arch. So now next step, the first thing that you're going to do, like I said before, you have, you're going to turn your toes in. So the heel should be behind your second and third toe. That's exactly how it should be. Okay? Between these two toes, that's exactly what the heel should be. Behind it. So the knees are aligned to the heel on the back and also aligned to the hip bone. Okay? Right here. Not right here. <laughs> right here. So that alignment will be very helpful for your posture. 
and minimize lower back pain. Okay? So the second tip will be extending each toe, each toe by itself with your hand and making sure that each toe is touching the ground on the back. Okay, it's actually like <laughs> okay so once I have my toes extended I'm going to grasp grasp them so first of all how to identify flat feet the person is going to stand like just like this and is going to bring the weight all the all all the way is gonna be on the on the inner side of the foot okay and the pinky toe is gonna be outstanding it might be not touching the floor most of people have this area a little bit pronated like protruded um, it comes out a little bit it, it looks like a like another head coming out and this area suffers a lot on the foot all this making unable the pinky toe the pinky toe is where the balance is so when we don't use the toe we lose our balance so the second the second tip to identify flat feet is that we curl our toes we curl our toes to manage grasping the floor to move forward and the third tip is when we sit we bring our knees in okay making this movement very 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 um all right, so when we sit, we sit like this, okay? So those are the three tips to identify if you have flat feet. So now, the first thing to do, and this is prior to the exercises that I'm gonna be giving you to correct your feet, okay? So if I have my foot like this, the first thing you need to do is bring it to get towards in front, having a nice separation. So the separation will be from the hip, okay? All the way down to the floor with your toes turned in, okay? And this is basically for this purpose. So the toes are gonna be curled in. Intentionally, I'm going to make sure that they are extended, but they might not be able to extend completely. So, like this one right here, I'm gonna help a little bit to grab it and extend it. All right, so make sure that your toes are extended <laughs> completely against. <clears throat> against the floor so this is the tip number two <laughs> once you identify that you have flat feet and this is you're going to make sure that you pressing down pressing down with the toes all right because this is the first this is very important to fix your flat feet the toes, we use the toes to move forward. So that will be grasping the floor and doing this movement. Okay, so what I'm doing in here, I am using the pinky toe, I'm making sure that I'm using the toe, the pinky toe. Okay, 
That's tip number two. Extending the toes is number one. Grasping the toes is number two. Okay? So number three, I'm going to turn, I'm going to bring my knees out, okay? So I can make a little tiny hole between my toes and my heel. So basically, I'm in this way, I'm like this, grasping my toes, and I'm gonna turn it out, having all my toes on the floor, having my knees extended and I stay there a little bit and down uh, okay that, that would be something that prior to the exercises okay first of all to identify the flat feet and these are the three tips to do prior to the exercises why because the problem is not just the arch Start with your toes and all the way up. We are working this muscle right here, okay? To activate this is called tibialis. This is the muscle responsible of the arch, okay? The one in charge of this muscle is the medius glute. So I have all the connection all the way up to the hip. The medius glute is responsible of the outer side the, of the, the outer rotation of your foot. Okay? So the outer rotation of your foot, that's when you inactivate the medius glute. You bring your toes in and Activate instantly the medius glute. Okay, <laughs> just so you know. <clears throat> so now, once you have this, the and once you have done this, maybe like five times. I mean, it's, it can be very uh, not painful but it's something that your body doesn't know what to do. So it's really new and it's going to be heavy the first day. Okay, so I suggest you to take it easy. This is to retrain the toes to do what they were used to do when you were younger, okay? So now I'm gonna get you through the exercises. first exercise will be now that you have your toes grounded and your foot is straight forward you're gonna make sure that you raise your heel using this toe which is the pinky toe that's gonna make my heel come out I'm not trying to do that on purpose I'm focusing on using the pinky toe. Okay, so I'm gonna do that as high as I can, maintaining my knees out. Okay, so basically, my knees are in front. No. My toes are crossing the floor and making sure that my toes, my pinky toe is is on the floor, you doing this job. When I come back down to the floor, my heels should be in the same place where it was when I took off. Okay? not to use make sure that you're doing this in front of a mirror so you are making sure that you're not doing it right because if you start doing this again <laughs> you activating more of what you already have okay so the idea is to bring the 
the heel a little bit out so you can use the pinky toe. Okay, so that will be number one. Exercise number two is going to be on a stair. On the stairs, you're going to do the same movement, the same position of the toes, and bring your heel all the way down, maintaining your knees straight, and bring your pressing your heel up again. Okay? This is as much as I can do. <laughs> okay? And this is the position of how it will be when you go and coming back up from the top. Exercise number three. This is to activate the tibialis to contract all these muscles and tiny fiber muscles <laughs> to the knee, making the knee stronger as well to support also the rest of the structure. So we're going to make a tippy toe, <laughs> extending the, all the tissues in here. You're going to feel the extension, the lengthening around here. I'm going to bring it out to the side and bring it up to the... So we're going to make like a little circle. Okay. And I'm activating again this muscle. This is the one I want to activate. All right. It's already by doing this video I feel like I'm exercising it already. Okay. So right here I'm lengthening doing the circle semi-circle and bring it up towards me and then I'm going to do the opposite direction. I mean the same direction on the opposite side and then again towards me so all the way down to pick it up and then down to brought it down and bring it towards me again so down Okay, so that's exercise number three. Another angle will be like this. I'm going to do this one step. This will be down to the side and then towards my knee. Now down to the side. Make a tippy toe and bring it towards the knee, toes towards the knee. Down. Now you 
going front and back in the same direction and bring it up again. So you're gonna feel again this muscle is the one that you are working on at the same time with the okay so you want to activate this is the muscle that you want to activate it's called tibialis anterior and the posterior which is behind it also you're working on the soleus all right and the gastrocnemius we're, we're working on lengthening those muscles and contracting them so as we do it simultaneously is working simultaneously the contraction and the lengthen as I make this movement okay so here I'm lengthening and contracting so now I'm contracting and lengthening right here all right so that's the the, the movement that you want to make <clears throat> and this is number exercise number three now I'm going to show you how to use the front roller. Foam roller is a myofascial release technique to release and relax tension on the joints. And it is a very helpful tool too for partial distortions like scoliosis, um, knee pain, shoulder pain, uh, minor pains and aches to take them out with this as long as you are healthy. Okay, if you have blood clots and uh, blood issues, bad circulation, this is not for you. If you have diabetes, which is the same as I mentioned before, but you don't have to have diabetes to have blood clots. <laughs> so um, if you have any bad circulation, please avoid doing this. That's why I didn't mention it at the beginning, because it's very, um, if you have osteoporosis, you should not be using this either. If you have arthritis, it might be helpful a little bit depending on how you're using it. This is very, very um, deep and it can cause severe side effects if it's misused. So again, if you have arthritis, osteoporosis, bad circulation, avoid this tool, okay? So this is basically for people who are healthy, for athletes. I use this for um, mostly athletes and people who have minor aches and minor um, ongoing pain, okay? Not due to surgery or anything like that, but it's very, very helpful when it's used correctly. So today, I'm going to show you how to use this correctly in the way that you're not going to be <laughs> damaged. Okay? So, what does this tool do to you? It's going to lengthen the myofascia. It's going to release it. The myofascia is a membrane that is between the muscle and the skin to protect the muscle from toxins of the skin okay so saying that it can be very very deep it's a very it's like a massage a deep tissue massage you might get dizzy or thirsty or even hungry after doing this so I'm going to show you I'm going to show you <coughs> From, you're gonna place the you're gonna place the uh, the heel on the foam roller and you're just gonna roll it. You can help with the other leg if you want. Okay. 
When you are ready, you can actually release the neck and do it without. <laughs> and that will create more tension. I'm gonna show you how, okay? So that's basically how you do it. So in this second round of golf, I'm gonna turn it and do the side of that leg, of that muscle, okay? You can even do this so basically, this I'm using this for the Achilles tendon, which is most the one that um, has most of the tension. Okay? And now I'm going to turn it to the other side. So basically, I'm turning my foot side to do one side, and then to the inner side to do the inner side of the leg. Okay? You may feel tingling sensations and the circulation. The tingling sensation is basically circulation going through. Okay? You do this back and forth, maybe once or twice, depending on how you feel. There's no. I'm going to show you how to do this one. I'm going to do this one with that. So basically, I'm going to put it on top. This is more advanced. Okay? If I want to put more pressure, I'm gonna put it on top of the knee or on top of my heel, never in the middle, okay? So either on top or on the heel or just to put it resting right there or just raising it, all right? So now in here, I'm putting all my body, not my body weight, but yes, a lot more pressure. So I'm raising my hip off the floor and rolling all the way up to behind the knee, okay? Just a little bit below the knee, per se. Just a little bit below the knee. The knee, be like behind the knee, try to avoid that. Just a little bit below the knee and come back, okay? You can even cross the leg if you want, um, but avoid pressure on the knee. Okay, so that will be how you do the full brother. Okay, <laughs> well, this is all. This is all for today. If you like this video, please subscribe and. I have a checklist where you can find easily ongoing pain or on chronic pain that you can release right away. If you feel like this is helpful to you, please share with your friends and anyone who may need this information. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.